What is going on YouTube? Hand Math making another random crypto TV episode. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as the current coin market cap, as well as sharing an article posted by Cointelegraph in regards to one of my most favorite influential people when it comes to financial success and freedom in the long term. Rich Dad, Poor Dad author, Bitcoin is messing into the Fed's territory. Robert Kiyosaki, an awesome man and very, very, very powerful and influential. We'll be discussing this article later on in two today's video. I do although want to discuss with you a couple of things in regards to the current technical analysis and chartings that we're seeing right now. As you can tell, we are starting to see some consolidation happen very, very, very close to and being in sync with Litecoin's descending fractal that is forming on the charts. I want to spend a quite a bit of time in today's video discussing the closing position of the descending triangle, our descending wedge on Litecoin, and then discuss where in regards we could potentially see a rise and breakout to. Otherwise, if you you guys are new to the channel we do daily uploads every single day uh, so make sure to subscribe smash that post notifications bell you know make sure to turn that on and also remember every single Friday we do a free $25 Bitcoin giveaway all you have to do to enter is comment down below that's right just leave a comment and we'll do the drawings tomorrow because tomorrow is Friday otherwise let's jump into the video all right, guys, so I want to start off with obviously discussing this Litecoin technical analysis and then jump into the Bitcoin chartings with Ethereum as well. So when we look at Bitcoin, you can start to see a couple of things. Clearly, we hit a major resistance on the four hour. This is Bitcoin US dollar on Coinbase. We hit a resistance right here, $8,300 immediately fell down to a support. What I found very interesting was while looking at this technical analysis, moving into Litecoin charting, I noticed there was a very interesting pattern. Not only did Bitcoin hit a resistance right here at its high low middle moving average, Litecoin also just so happened to hit a very, very, very strong resistance right here too. Now I can show you this in the four hour to match what Bitcoin was seeing. And you'll notice a couple of things. Not only did Bitcoin hit its high low MMA the same time Bitcoin, or sorry, Litecoin hit the same uh, high low MMA as Bitcoin did. You'll notice not only that, but we had this major downtrend where we've used new Numerous times in regards to resistance, you can see all over the charts here, we hit it all the way over here kind of, and then we definitely hit it here. And now currently in today's aspect, we hit it right over here. So you can see not only did we have the high low MMA acting as a major resistance, we managed to also hit the downtrend as a major resistance, which inevitably pushed the coin downwards. Now, obviously, if we did decide to break bullish from that, uh, that would have been very interesting and the markets would have reacted very different than how they did. But we decided to actually retrace lower, which isn't necessarily a problem. This is a huge resistance and the markets have been kind of weak the past couple of months, as we know from this major downtrend trend. So to see that small pull, uh, you know, bearish pullback was not something that I was too worried about. And almost I did expect that. So moving on to Bitcoin and where we could potentially seeing markets move to in the near future. Now, I did say in yesterday's video that there is a chance we could see this correct back upwards. Unfortunately, that did not happen on the four hour. We were really looking for some sort of correction back up to continue the downtrend. Because as you know, we've seen previous levels of correction leading to higher movements. Now, even though this area right here did not lead to a slight correction followed by a bigger movement, we did still retrace. And this is still a good thing. And I want to discuss with you that when we see these movements, these do inevitably lower the price action. Price action. You can see small retracements do do that. And it does open us up for bigger movements. Now understand when we did make a, this small breakout from 7,900 all the way to 8,300, we ended up being overbought. And the fact that we saw this pullback, it ended us pushing us into the oversold market. By pushing us into oversold, it gives us plenty of room to move up higher. Now also keep in mind that this is only the you know four hour short term price analysis. You'll notice when we extend this to the daily, we're just now retesting the um, you can see right here the high low or sorry the RSI the bottom of this which is indicating oversold the other big thing I wanted to point out is the MACD you'll notice the MACD is seeing a crossover because we were such an overextended area you can see right here we're starting to enter potentially bearish volume this could lead us into more downtrend now here's what I want to discuss notice how on the downtrend you can see this descending triangle in purple saw confirmation of a break below it you can see right here, we were considering using this as a means of support 
and we manage to break below this. This is what we were considering using that would lead us potentially to see consolidation. So if we bounced off here, movement like this. With this being broken, if we don't get back inside of it, that now gives us opportunities to use this purple uptrend as the support, leading to a bigger symmetrical break. So with that being said, there is possibilities of us retracing to this level. I want you guys to be aware of that. That is definitely a possibility. But immediately upon retracement and retestment of bottom support, we should see a very strong reversal back upwards, retesting down here, and then spiraling into something like this. You can see how easily this will play out. Eventually hitting the you know downwards and upwards pressure right here, the point of contact, this inevitably could break like this, like we're, what we're expecting to see come towards 2020 uh, or the end of 2019 into 2020. So there is some pretty major moves happening right now. Now, with that being said, you can also see kind of the end of this, you know, for Bitcoin is or for Litecoin is down here, which is much farther than what, what this fractal is. So there's a chance we could see correction or retracement out of the fractal or very easily see corrections back up and a swing back to the upside within Litecoin. Notice that if we do see a small correction using the price range could easily see a break of up to, I'd say about 67% gains, which is about $30 per coin at the price level of around, I'd say $46.99 or $47. Currently the price is trading at 49. So there's a pretty big jump, even if we do decide to break from right now. So when you look at Litecoin's descending fractal, you'll notice a couple of things. One is this unfortunate bear crossing right here, this bearish crossing. This is a bearish signal when you see the blue band on the MACD cross over that orange uh, signal right there, that orange um, usually ends up meaning uh, the signal as to whether or not we're entering a bull or bear market. So when you see when we cross over here, you can see the blue band crossed over the orange that indicated bearish moves. And that's what that's what's happened. That's what we've seen. Once we see the correction over, we tend to move back higher. You can see right here, we started to correct up. And now we're seeing that cross once again. Now this may not hold for quite some time because I do believe we're literally looking for a couple of days of consolidation sideways, and then potentially seeing that break to the upside and that swing to higher levels. Now I do want to discuss with you the current coin market cap, then we'll look at Ethereum and XRP. But the markets are down. You'll notice we did have that trickle downwards. Top 10 crypto those are practically all down except for Stellar and Bitcoin SV. Everything else has pretty much depleted downwards in that uh, bearish movement and now have been trading sideways, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We're seeing that consolidation, that correction, that sideways play that we're seeing right now within the coins. And lastly, to talk about this rich dad, poor dad, Bitcoin messing into Fed's territory. I mean, his words are very influential. I wanted to share them with you. Robert Kiyosaki, hopefully you guys know who this is. Huge influence, you know, huge financial, uh, you know, influencer that you guys should listen to. And he has some very interesting points that I think you guys might want to, you know, hear. And now don't be offended. He does have some very interesting words if you watch some of the other videos that maybe I'll, you know, display on the channel, but it's something to consider. So the author of a 32 million copy bestseller, Rich Dad Poor Dad, has taken a coy stance on Bitcoin's David and Goliath-like battle with the Fed. Now, one thing being said, the fact that he even knows what Bitcoin is and is willing to discuss what Bitcoin is, is a huge influence on the market. And that means that Bitcoin is here to stay and it's on big multimillionaire investors radar, which is huge. Now, now, Kiyosaki, whose book reportedly sold 32 million copies, which blows my mind, across 40 countries and has had an estimated net worth of $80 million, made his remark during an interview with, Blue, uh, with Bloomberg. I, I should really try to find that uh, video too. Bitcoin taking on one of the most powerful banks ever created. Kiyosaki is no stranger to controversy. His bestseller remains one of the most well-known personal finance books ever written. It has also become admired in several scandals, notably over his financial education firm's bankruptcy filing in 2012. Did not know that. During the interview, Kiyosaki reiterated his belief in investing in assets such as gold, oil, and real estate. When asked his perspective on new asset classes, particularly Bitcoin, uh, this is what he said. I think it's so interesting. They're taking on the Fed, one of the most powerful banks ever created, and they're messing into their territory. That's like taking McDonald's. That's like me taking on McDonald's. So I think they're going to step on them. I think it's a very exciting time. Kiyosaki also says, personally, I am a Technosaurus Rex. I can barely use a cell phone, so I'd stay out of you know, cryptocurrencies. So if you're a young person and you like crypto, might be your place. Again, everything is just do what you love. I love business. I love gold. I love using debt as money because in 1971, the dollar became debt and I love paying no taxes legally. So very smart, very interesting. And that 
is a very interesting quote. Uh, you know, using debt to your advantage to not have to pay taxes is quite interesting. While Kiyosaki is a critic of corporate debt-driven finance, he's uh, he advocates for an opportunistic and deft approach to systematic uh, systemic volatility it generates. As manifested in major boom and bust cycles, he told Bloomberg his predicted uh, that the next downturn will be sparked by the crisis in the pension sector between 2022 and 2025. Very interesting, the pension sector. I wonder what you guys have to discuss us about that. So that's pretty much it. Otherwise, we're potentially sleepwalking into a financial crisis, even work than 20, 2008 by sticking with new orthodoxy of monetary policy, pretending that we have made the banking system safe. We are sleepwalking into that privacy or into that um, crisis. So some very interesting technical analysis, some very interesting news. I do want to discuss more about Robert Kiyosaki here on the channel. Also notice within Ethereum, another reason to call the bottom is the fact that we're hitting a bottom support at around $160 while resistance was up at 196. So this is another confirmation that we've hit rock bottom. I don't believe we're heading lower. You can see we have candle wicks lower than that, but we've immediately, you know, corrected back upwards. Litecoin seeing consolidation right now. I do believe we hit a support here and we're going to be consolidating sideways. Same thing goes with big Bitcoin, especially on its four hours, showing us that we've pretty much hit oversold, hitting you know the bottom on the four hour charts and the daily charts right now does give me concern that we're going to swing back upwards. There's a chance we could even swing back up above the resistance that we now currently have and trade out sideways within here. And for XRP hitting resistance on the high low MMA, this is what I'd like to see happen within Bitcoin and Litecoin. But for the most part, we are anticipating some more play out. We're getting very, 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 very close to major volume moving into the market. It's right now, these bearish confirmations of MACD does give me some concern that, you know, we could be seeing some more bear market. And that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to head lower. That could just mean that we're going to be consolidating out longer before seeing that correction to the upside. Otherwise, that's going to wrap up today's episode, guys. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications. We do technical analysis like this every day. And remember, if you guys want to enter the giveaway that we're doing every Friday now for a free $25 of Bitcoin, all you have to do to enter is leave a comment on today's video. And I will see you in tomorrow's episode. Peace. <laughs>